Welcome back to WordPress Made Easy. I am Dave Swift, your instructor, and in this video, we're talking about plugins, namely some of my favorite plugins, the ones that I start every single site with. Now, we've already been talking a lot about Astra, Astra Pro, that's the theme, and the Pro add-on pack. We've mentioned Elementor and Elementor Pro. Those are definitely my go-tos for every single site we start, unless we're uh, building a community site, which we might use a different theme. But after that, there are still some standbys that I install on every single site, and, and let's get into it. I wanna show you my favorite ones right now. All right, so here we are in the plugins section of WordPress. Now, on this site we've been working on, I only have three plugins installed. I have Breeze, Elementor, and Elementor Pro. Now, Breeze actually comes with your Cloudways account, so if you go through the process from the beginning of this course, you will probably have a very similar layout. They might add in a couple extra plugins here. You can remove those, and I'll give you uh, good replacements for them uh, throughout this video. Breeze is actually a pretty good caching plugin, and I know that sounds complex, but basically it's just gonna make your pages load a little bit faster. You don't really need to do anything if you're using Cloudways. You're gonna be you know, in pretty good shape just with their default settings. So let's go ahead and move on to the next topic, which is removing spam. So from plugins, we're gonna go up to add new, and I'm gonna go ahead and search for anti-spam B. Here is the plugin. It's got a mighty little B over here. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. What this is gonna do for you, you don't really have to do anything, is it's going to look for spammy looking comments and then flag them for you so that they don't get published live. You'll have to review them to see if they're worth posting. Let's go back to the WordPress dashboard here and you'll see the anti-spam B widget down here. I'm actually gonna move this up to the top so we can get a better look at it. Uh, you'll see this anti-spam widget and it'll show up to show your most recent comments and it'll also ask you to to approve uh, comments, see which ones are uh, that it's flagged as spam. It's really nice little user interface. You know, while we're on this dashboard, let me just give you a little tour of how you can clean this up. So if there's any widgets you don't wanna see, like these big notifications, you can obviously just dismiss. But if I go up to this screen options section, I can actually turn some stuff off. So one thing that you know WordPress likes to do is advertise themselves. I can turn off this WordPress events and news. Uh, quick draft, I don't really use a quick draft, so I don't find myself ever really really just quickly posting on my blog. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well. The Elementor overview is actually pretty nice because it gives you shortcuts to your most recently edited pages, maybe some Elementor news that is relevant. Uh, and then at a glance, I can kind of keep an eye on what's going on on the site overall. So these widgets are good. I'm gonna leave those on. All right, let's get back to our plugin discussion. We'll go to plugins, add new again. This time let's talk about SEO. Now, if you're not familiar with what SEO is, it stands for search engine optimization. And basically what we're trying to do with search engine optimization is make it very clear for search engines what the contents of your page is. Now, this is an entirely different course. It's a very long subject to learn how to do search engine optimization properly, but there are a few really essential plugins for WordPress that can give you a great start. And the one I'm gonna recommend in this video is totally free, it's SEO Press. And right here, I'm gonna go ahead and install this. Now there is a premium version of this, and it's actually not very much money. I think it's around 40 dollars per year. Uh, definitely worthwhile if you're uh, you know, looking to highly optimize your blog. I recommend adding in the pro version as well, but let me show you what the free one can do. All right, now that I've got SEO Press installed, every time I'm adding a page or a post, I'm gonna see a few extra fields. Let's go ahead and open up my first post here and we'll scroll down past the content and now I have this SEO section right here. Now what this is gonna do is give me the opportunity to replace the metadata for the post. Now, what is metadata? Well, it's basically the information that Google's gonna see and it's gonna display to people who are searching for relevant topics that your blog might rank for. So it gives you this little preview over here here. So here it says my first post client amp. Well, that's not actually the best looking. So let me see if I can make that look a little bit better. All right. So I just went ahead and changed the title here. Now I don't advise doing anything that's misleading, but I changed this to be my top five steps to creating a WordPress site. And then I added in the company name here, client amp. So I would want to make sure that this is actually relevant and it's included inside of the content here. I wanted to give you an idea of what this actually is doing by changing this title. It doesn't change the article. The article is still called my first post, 
but Google is going to see it as having this topic. So typically, these line up, but you might want to tweak them so that they look good on the search engine results pages. Down here, we have what's called the meta description, and this is the content that shows up underneath the title. So you might want to tweak this as well so that it gives, you know, you're limited in the number of characters you can display here. You might want to tweak the wording so that it's very clear to people who are searching what your page is about. SEO Press will also do a content analysis, so you can enter in a keyword right here, and it will tell you what to improve in your content to have the best chance of ranking for that keyword. Now, that's just a couple features of SEO Press, but I think you're getting the idea of how powerful it is and how important it is to have some type of SEO plugin on your WordPress website. If you want to have a full tutorial of setting up a website using SEO Press, definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. If I get enough feedback, I'll put it on the calendar. All right, next let's talk about emails. This is a topic that is very confusing to people because they just assume that a website is able to send out emails, but it's really not. WordPress on its own doesn't have any email sending capability. We need to add that in either at the server level or inside of WordPress itself. Now, if you're using Cloudways, they actually have an add-on that you can choose, but most people are probably not gonna wanna use that, especially if you're setting up a site for a client. So let me show you how most people tend to set up emails inside of WordPress. Press. We're gonna go back over to plugins and hit add new. This time let's search for SMTP. Now you're gonna get quite a few options here and if you're ever in a predicament where you're trying to choose between several of the similar type plugins, it's really a good idea to just look at the reviews and how many active sites are using the plugin. It seems like common sense, but I do want to point it out. It's kind of like buying something on Amazon. You want to see, you know, what are people saying about it? How many other people have bought it? So this one right here has over 1 million active installations. Uh, this one has 100,000 active installations, and this one has 400,000 active installations. So these are all very, very popular plugins. Having over 100,000 is, is a pretty high number for a WordPress plugin. There's just so many plugins that it's hard to get that big of an install base. The one that I've used most frequently in the past is WP Mail SMTP. You can see it's got the most users by far. So let's go ahead and install this. Now what this is going to do and why you actually need a plugin like this is anytime someone forgets their password and they need to have the website send out a reminder, the website's got to have the ability to hit someone's inbox. And so they have to be signed up through your email provider in order to be able to deliver that message. Go ahead and hit activate here. It's also important if you're collecting leads and you want to be able to take in forms and send those out to your clients or maybe receive them yourself, your website needs to be able to send emails. All right, so here I am in the WP Mail SMTP settings right over here on the sidebar. And you'll notice that this is the free version. There is a premium version and that's only necessary in very few circumstances. And let me show you when you would actually need to upgrade to Pro. Let's go down here uh, to the different mailers that are available. Now, you'll look at this list and see if anything looks familiar to you. I know a lot of people use Google or Gmail and you can use your Gmail account to send out messages on your website's behalf. There's actually a fairly good document right down here for setting that up. But if you wanted to use something else like Amazon SES is a great email platform for sending out thousands of emails. Google, on the other hand, will limit you. You can only send about 500 emails a day from your account. So if you have a very busy website, you could probably start out when you're small with something like Google, but as your website grows and you're sending more and more emails, you probably need to move to a dedicated mailing provider, something like Amazon SES. I use Mailgun on a lot of sites. I've had great success with that. Uh, now, there are other providers as well. Microsoft is here. SES is here, but those are part of the pro version of the plugin. So if you're getting started and you're using, say, Gmail or another SMTP provider, I can click here and just enter in the SMTP host information here. I'd be able to set this plugin up and it would work great inside of most circumstances until you get very, very popular and you have to switch to one of those transactional email services. If you are using Gmail, I do recommend clicking right here and then going through the Gmail documentation on how to configure this. It's not super easy, but definitely block off a half hour or so to go through and get all of the application uh, permissions set up properly. All right, next let's talk about how you can install your Facebook Pixel or your Google tracking code on your website. This is a very common situation. You need to inject a little bit of code, maybe you have a chat widget, something like that. You wanna get to show up on your website. Well, to do this with WordPress, I really feel like the best way to do it is with a plugin. You can, of course, edit some files and get really complex with it, but I like having everything in a nice, reliable plugin. And the one I'm going to actually recommend if you're using the Astra theme is called Astra Hooks. All right. Now, if we go ahead and install Astra Hooks, I'll show you what this looks like. So here, Astra Hooks is installed. Let's go over to the customizer, Appearance. 
customize. And now you're gonna notice a new section show up inside of the customizer called hooks. Now what this is gonna do is allow you to inject code into, let's say the header, I can just paste in my Google tracking code right here, or maybe I want it to go in the footer so that it loads last, I could do that as well. Now this code is gonna show up on every single page of your website. So if you don't want that, if you only want it to show up on certain pages, that might be a good reason to upgrade to Astra Pro, which has a custom layout option that lets you do this on a page by page basis. So the last plugin that is essential in my mind outside of security and backup, which we'll cover in another lesson, is image optimization. So we've already spent a lot of money on getting good business class hosting. We've got our own VPS and we got a nice fast theme in Astra and maybe even upgraded to Astra Pro to tweak it further. But then we go and upload a full resolution 15 megabyte image and it just brings our site to a crawl because, well, that's just a large file and it's gonna take a while to download. So how can we avoid having those types of mistakes happen? Well, there's some really good plugins out there to optimize your images. And the one that I'm gonna recommend in this video is Short Pixel. Let's go ahead and get this set up. I'm gonna go over to plugins, add new, and I'll search for Short Pixel. Here it is, the Short Pixel image optimizer. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. So to start using Short Pixel, you're gonna need what's called an API key. Don't worry if you don't have one, just enter in your email address right here and hit request key. They're gonna send you in a code you just paste in right down here and then hit validate. And you don't have to pay anything, you'll be able to process up to 100 images a month totally for free. What happens when you cross that 100 images? Well, you're gonna have to sign up for one of their paid plans and their pricing is really, really reasonable. I've got it pulled up over here. So here's the free plan, 100 images a month. If you wanna go up to $5 a month, you're gonna get up to 5,000 images a month. That's gonna be enough for most people. And then of course they have larger plans as well. So what does Short Pixel do for you? Well, let me demonstrate quickly here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the API key, hit validate. All right, now that my API key is validated, I'm gonna be able to go ahead and start to compress the images on my website. Now what it's gonna do is make the images load a lot faster without compromising the look of the images themselves. You can see I have kind of a three tiered option here. I can do a lossy, glossy or lossless image. So lossy is gonna be the hardest compression. It's gonna make the files the smallest they can be, whereas lossless will keep the files a little bit larger, but it'll maintain absolutely the highest quality of photo. It does have the handy option to run a few tests before you decide, but you know what? I've done this enough that I know lossy is pretty good. So let me go ahead and just hit save and go to bulk process. Now I don't have very many images on this website. You can see I have 17 original images, but WordPress has gone ahead and actually created smaller versions of those images called thumbnails. And there are 57 of those already. So if I leave this box checked here to include thumbnails, it's gonna start optimizing images. And what was 17 images is going to become 74 images. And well, I'm okay with that for now. Just know if you're on that free plan, that's gonna eat up almost all of your credits almost instantaneously. And that can be a little bit frustrating or off-putting. So the way around that, of course, would be to not include the thumbnails and then regenerate the thumbnails later after you've already compressed the original images. Why don't we go ahead and do that? So I'm only gonna optimize the 17 original images and I'll just let this run. Now it's important to note that you have to actually leave this window open. You can't close it. It's not running in the background. So as soon as I close this, uh, you know, my work is gonna need to be resumed later. All right, we're at 76% here. This is almost done compressing the site. Now it's up to 82%. I'll just mention that after I do this initial, what they call bulk image optimization, ShortPixel will just notice anytime you upload a, another image to your website and it'll automatically go in and compress it for you. It doesn't remove that original file unless you tell it in the settings you want to. So this is a really nice way to kind of set it and forget it and just make sure that your website always loads fast without having any accidents of really large photos getting uploaded. Trust me, it happens far more than you'd think. All right, it says, congratulations, my media library has been successfully optimized. And you can see that the average optimization was 69.74% and I've actually saved five megabytes of space. So that is really great. That's a pretty huge reduction to reduce the file size by almost 70%.
You can imagine if you had a very large website and you're doing hundreds or even thousands of photos, this is gonna be an absolute ginormous space saver and that's gonna just translate to a faster website and a better user experience for people who come to your website. But we still have the issue of 57 thumbnails have not been optimized, so how do we regenerate those thumbnails? Well, of course, there is a plugin for that. Let's go ahead and check this out. This is the beauty of the WordPress ecosystem, by the way. Really, any feature you can think of, you can go ahead and look to see if there's a plugin that already exists for it. Often you'll be surprised at what you find. It's might There might be one and it might be extremely popular. However, keep your eyes out. You don't want to install too many plugins that are from unknown developers or only have a few users. I really try to look for premium plugins that are, that are from well-known developers that I know are keeping their products up to date. That's going to make sure my website stays secure. All right, I just typed in regenerate here and we've got regenerate thumbnails advanced from ShortPixel themselves. So they're aware this, this might be something that you want to do. So let's go ahead and activate this. We'll go under the settings and we have a regenerate period here. I can say, oh, only regenerate the thumbnails from the last month or so, but I'm just gonna regenerate them all. And there we go, very quickly, it's gonna regenerate all of those plugins based on the optimized versions, the ones I've just compressed. I ended up saving myself about 57 credits there that I would have used from my free short pixel plan. Now, last thing is I don't need this thumbnail plugin anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate it and delete it. There's no reason to keep plugins installed on your website, even if they are from good developers, if you're not using them. Being a secure WordPress website owner means that you're keeping things tidy and not leaving a lot of loose ends laying around. All right, so those were some of my favorite WordPress plugins, the ones I use on every single website. Now, I'm sure there are others out there that are essential to you, and let me know what they are. Leave me a comment down below. There is also some more advanced plugins that I use frequently on a lot of sites, but they just weren't quite right for this beginner style video. I'll be making another video about the more advanced plugins that I tend to gravitate towards as well. Now, if you're staying tuned for the rest of this course, we're going to be talking about the media library inside of WordPress next. So I'll see you in the next lesson.